Hi, Pastor Jane here. In 2023, we've given ourselves the goal of trying to refine our purpose as the church. And one of the great places to look is in the Bible's letters from the different writers, such as Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, James. We've, we've been starting to tackle going through the process of looking through some of these. And the book of Galatians, which we've just begun, is very instructive when it comes to refining our purpose or not losing sight of what is to be our foundation. And so Paul had begun a church in Galatia, but after he left, others moved in, others who had different ideas about what it meant to be included in God's family. They said, hey, what Paul taught you, it's not enough. You need to do more. And so Paul takes the opportunity to write his letter to the Galatians and you can hear the frustration in his voice. So from chapter one, starting verse six, he says, I am shocked that you were turning away so soon from God who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be the good news, but it's not the good news at all. You're being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. That's some caution that we need to consider. As a church, we can become deluded. We can think that what we're doing is practicing Christianity, and yet not. We can think that we're following Christ, but introduce wrong ideas and get ourselves entirely off track. So he continues with, my old self has been crucified with Christ. That's how it needs to be, so that I might live for God. It's no longer that I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. See, there's an interesting thing I think we do in the Christian church is we treat our belief in Jesus like adding an app to our phone or our computer rather than what he really is, and that's having a whole new operating system. We think that Jesus is a piece of what it means to be a Christian, and then we give ourselves a bunch of rules to prove that we are such as, and this is a little brainstorming that we did it in our congregation, just what are some of the rules that we sometimes give ourselves? Well, one might be church attendance. Others might be daily Bible reading. How about all the no-nos that we aren't to do, like no dancing, no swearing, no going to movies, no drinking, and then of course, giving a 10% tithe. These are all rules that somehow we think if we follow them, will make us better Christians. But each one of them are a fallacy. They can all be good in their own way, but they are in no means make us better. They in no way grant us greater favor with God. They in no way include us more deeply into his family or even ensure the fact that we will get to heaven. Let me break them down a little bit for you. During COVID, did we not discover, couldn't go to church? Did that stop the church from being? No. So going into a building every week is not mandatory for being a Christian. What about daily Bible reading? Now you might go, well, of course you, you, you really ought to. Well, if you can, it's wonderful. But what about Christians in countries who can't? What about the first and second century and even way beyond where illiteracy levels prevented people from being able to read the Bible? Or as Brother Andrew discovered on one of his trips to Poland over the, over the wall, over the, into the communist territory, when he encouraged people to read their Bibles regularly, they were just like depressed. They couldn't. And he discovered that out of 
a congregation out of a group of people of probably close to 100 people, seven Bibles. That's it. That's all they had access to. So it takes a little creativity to be able to even absorb God's word to a little bit, let alone reading every day. Not saying that reading isn't good. It is good. Reading a Bible is good. But if we make it a rule, if we make it something that we have to check off on our to-do list, I think we lose sight on the value of it. And then there's all the no-nos, as I said. Well, I think Jesus doesn't want us to focus on the no-nos so much as he wants us to focus on the things we are to do, such as do love, do compassion, do generosity, all those things that we should do that turn us into Christ-like. And then, of course, there's the 10% tithe, which a lot of people, well, of course, you can't argue against that. I think Jesus gave us a new rule, actually. When there was an individual who gave two pennies, a widow, and then there was others who had parades as they trumpeted the fact that they were going to give a large donation. Who did Jesus applaud as having given more and having had the right attitude? The widow. Not because she gave 10%, like the rich people who gave out of their excess. She gave 100%. We need to understand that as Christians, God owns everything. And to, who are we to say, God, you get 10%. The other 90, that's mine. Or who are we to say, you can have my Sunday morning as I go to church, but the rest of the week, that's mine. Or I'll take the time to read a chapter, maybe two, aren't I a good Christian, and totally miss out on the richness that is contained in God's word. Or following a list of can't do this, can't do that. And yet what are the things that we're doing that God does not look favorably upon. So Jesus needs to be more than just an app that we add to our lives. As we become Christ followers, how we work, how we think, the things that we do, they need to be transformed like a whole brand new operating system. And will we be tempted to go back to the old way? Sure. There are definitely times it's easier. It's what we know, but it's never right. We must be certain that we are trusting in Jesus alone, not in our lists of rules, not in the things that we do, not in the ways that we act, though those will be reflections of our relationship with Jesus. But it's Jesus alone and living according to the two greatest commandments, to love God with all of our heart, soul, and mind, and love our neighbors as ourselves. And that love, following those two commandments, it's not what earns our way into heaven, but it is proof that we are truly Jesus followers, that he has become our new operating system. <music>